Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our Star Wars Unlimited Art Direction Insights stream. I'm joined today by one familiar face and one face that's new to you, but we really are excited to be having you here, Tony. Uh, why don't you to both uh, tell us who you are, just for uh, the new audience as well, Tyler. I'll, I'll go first since I'm familiar face. Hello, I'm Tyler. I'm a senior game designer. I do game design and stuff. I also do other stuff we're going to talk about today. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. I'm Tony Brott. I'm the managing art director at uh, Fantasy Flight Games. I manage the art team. We create all the art for Star Wars Unlimited and all of our other games. Nice. That's really cool. So, I know that we, we got you out here and we got some insights out of you uh, earlier today. So, if you haven't seen the article already on our website, it's live where Tony and some other members of the team give you a little bit of uh, background on what they do, what art pieces they really enjoyed, favorite parts of the job, some of the challenges that they face, uh, different parts of that. And so we're gonna dive into a couple of those questions a little more deeply today, and then we're gonna end by showing off some of our three favorite art pieces from set two. So just just be patient and we'll, uh, we'll get into Shadows of the Galaxy. Xander said you get to pick two pieces. So Tony and I were like, yeah. Six is two, right? Six yeah, is two. Exactly. We've got a lot of pieces yeah. that we're going to show We need off. more. <laughs> it's going to be really fun. <laughs> uh, so why don't we start off by asking you, what, what is Art Direction? What do you do as the managing art director here at FFG? Okay, so Art Direction at FFG is we go out and we commission artwork from uh, freelance artists all around the world to create the artwork for our games, specifically for Star Wars Unlimited. Uh, since that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we start off with, with Tyler over here who comes to us with art briefs, descriptions of what the art should be. Mm -hmm. And then we, as a team, we'll go through all those, make sure we've got all the right references and all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. um, then we go back and once those all get entered into our system, we send those out to our artists. We make sure the artists have everything that they need to create the artwork and we work with them you know, they send us their sketches, their works in progress, their finals. We do all the approval. Um, and yeah, that's so. And, and it's all about making sure that all the artwork feels Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So it's got to feel like how you want the card to feel when you're playing it, but also feel like Star Wars and have this, like, combine it all into something that when you put it on the tabletop, it gives you that experience that you want, basically. Not exactly. only is it mechanically doing the thing that you want, but it also f looks like that. It also is, is good. And it's also good. And it's also yes. good, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, then we need to make the art as good as we can. Yeah, awesome. And so what does a typical day look like for an art director here at FFG or an art director specifically working at on Star Wars Unlimited? Okay, so just as a caveat, there's no real typical day typical. for an art director. Uh, yeah, because... Who knows what's going to happen when you come in and you log in and you open up your email. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but uh, to kind of take it down to, you know, this is what we would kind of expect, right? We come in, we log in to, uh, to work each day, we open up our email, and we take a look at what artists have sent us, what stuff that we have to, uh, to review. If we're close to a deadline, then we get a lot more stuff. If we're not, then maybe we'll get some early... early uh, um, more uh, excited artists. We have some artists who just love to get everything done way early, and that's fantastic. We love that. <laughs> love keep, it. Keep it up, guys. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yep. Um, but yeah, then then it's it, then it's like Christmas. We you know you open up the email and you're like, okay, what did I get? And you see all the all the different works in progress that the artists send, and and then what we do is we actually as a team we do a peer review of every piece that comes in. Awesome. So we'll actually post that in a place where we can all review those things together. We include all of our notes, and then the person, the art director on the team who's working with the specific artist, compiles those notes and then sends that back to the artist to make sure that that the uh, artwork has changed and however it needs to be changed. Or sometimes we have, you know, for those lucky art, art directors and artists, it's like, hey, these all look great. Keep going. Awesome. Very cool. And so. We, we get a lot of comments and questions about the art style around Star Wars Unlimited. So what, what is the <laughs> origin of this art style or styles and different pieces that come into this? Um, and how did, how did we land on where we are now? Because this is before my time, so this is me genuinely asking for myself <laughs> as well. <laughs> nice. Okay, so for Star Wars Unlimited, we wanted to have a visual style that could encompass all aspects of Star Wars media. We wanted to be able to have a style that would work with, uh, where we could depict things that were in live action, things that were in animation, things that were in comic books, things that are in novels um, that haven't necessarily been visualized um, before. 
and have it all feel like it still fits in the game. You know, if we were to just go with screenshots from Clone Wars and from one of the live action like The Mandalorian and put them in the game, that would feel jarring next to each other. Mm -hmm. So we wanted something that would be able to incorporate all of that and, and have it feel like it fits. And, and, it, and we've got a visual sandbox that we, that we play in. We're not, very, we're not trying to get the exact specific, everything has to be exactly like this. We want to have some, some freedom for artists to have some visual expression, to be able to get some different things. We want people to be able to find things in the game that they're like, oh, I really like this. And we want discussion. We want people to say, you know, hey, this piece really works for me. You know, how do you think about this piece? And for people to talk about it. Yeah, very cool. And so with all of these things that you're doing, what do you think is one of the most challenging parts of art direction in this game or just in general as like you've taken on other projects? Oh, the most challenging part about art direction is just trying to make sure that everything gets finished on time. And working, we work with artists all around the world. We have more, we, are, we actually have more artists around the, that are outside the United States than inside the United States. And trying to make sure that we're organizing with the time, um, you know, time difference, trying to make sure that things get in on time, that can be, the, that can be super challenging. And especially if, if an artist goes dark, you know, like we're, we're getting close to a deadline and we're like, oh my gosh, this person's not responding. And, you know, we've had artists, who, unfortunately, who have had some serious life challenges. And so, you know, that some, some have been hospitalized and you're like, oh, my gosh. And so we do what we can to help help them to be able to finish their work when they're able to and, and work with the producers and game designers to make sure we can still get things done in time for the, you know, the games needs too. But, yeah, I mean, we're all people and we all have real life things that happen. And that's that can be the most challenging thing for anybody. Fair. Yeah, definitely for us. Tyler, not to put you on the spot as well, but what is the most challenging part of this as you're, you know, you're writing these art briefs and getting things, uh, working with the art team? You don't have to say the art team is difficult. Right? Like, but, <laughs> don't but, worry, it's not. <laughs> yeah, but what, what challenges uh, have, like, do you face as you're you know, coming up with some of these ideas? Sure, well, before I'll, I answer that, let's yeah. real quickly just cover my role in this whole process. Yes. Um, yeah. Before the art department starts working on commissioning the art, they need to know what to depict. Uh, and so my role as the game designer here uh, on the team, as the creative lead, I guess, uh, is that I oversee the writing of art briefs. So first, the game designers come up, uh, fill out what they want to be in the set. This card needs to be a three cost event that has this effect in the game and it needs to be read. Uh, great. And then I, or one of the, the designers on the set, go in and say, okay, if this is a three cost red event that does four damage, what, do, what is that card? What is the concept of that card? Uh, and we say, oh, it's some stormtroopers shooting at people. Great. Uh, and then, so then we go and we write a brief, which is just a very short summary of what the content of the art is going to be. Some stormtroopers are in the hallway and they're firing their blasters. Great. And then I get 300 of those <laughs> all at once. And I say, hey, Tony, here's 300, 300 pages of, 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 of what you're going to depict. Have fun. Um, and then Tony gives me feedback of, OK, well, based on who the artists are and, and how, the, how the piece is going to be visually composed, this is, this is how you should make these adjustments to the text of, oh, well, instead of saying it's, uh, uh, you know, this piece, we don't need to see the people who are being shot at because the focus is on the stormtroopers doing the shooting, yep. right? That kind of thing. Exactly. Um, or, oh, this is a cool piece, but like uh, the, the, the links you sent me are insufficient because we want to make sure we're depicting the thing, you know, the stormtrooper, make sure the stormtrooper helmets look correct. Or yeah, and to, mm -hmm. to, to, for, for, the, uh, for the audience out there, when he says links, he's talking about the links to the reference folders and things yeah, like that. Yeah, we have we have so databases of much reference. <laughs> databases so of much pictures. Reference. Just and so to answer your question, the hardest part of my job is making sure we have enough pictures to give to the artists to make sure they depict the Star Wars thing correctly. Yep, um, and we are super picky about that. And, yeah, we give him all kinds of grief. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely the slowest part of my job of like just <laughs> scouring. Okay, is this one right? Okay, is this enough? Okay, great, we got that one. Now there's how many more to go? <laughs> um, uh, and so uh, I work with the whole design team on actually generating the concepts of what the cards represent. Uh, sometimes it's very obvious. Mm -hmm. This is Darth Vader. Great, we'll just draw Darth Vader doing a thing. Um, and sometimes it's really nebulous. It's like this is a, an event that, that, uh, that 
that moves an upgrade around. Okay, mm -hmm. what is what does that mean? <laughs> what is that? What what Star Wars thing is doing making that effect happen in the game? Um, and so you gotta get a little creative. Uh, and so I work with the design team to come up with all the concepts, and then they help me write all the art briefs because I can't do it all by myself. Mm -hmm. um, but then I review it, and then Tony reviews it with me, and then Tony yeah. sends it off to them. We, we review all the art briefs together as a team, all the all of us on the art team, all of our art directors, and then we get to give all of our notes back to Tyler and go back and forth and make sure we have everything. That and we the need notes before. are like ninety five percent of the time. Get more pictures. <laughs> and I'm like, where do I find pictures? <laughs> yep, exactly. That's exactly right. Sounds like a pretty collaborative process then overall between oh, both yeah. teams and oh, everyone yeah. involved in this. So that's yeah. really cool to hear. This like, it's not just one person in a room being like, yep, this is perfect. It's everyone giving their opinions on how things should look and feel and go into this process. So that's really cool. So we asked about challenges, and you kind of gave some good examples, Tyler, so I'll, I'll move on from that. But what is one of your favorite parts about working with art direction and all the different parts or things that come along with it? Oh, man, for me, it's, and I think probably for everyone on our team, it's seeing the cool stuff that our artists come up with. You know, you just, that's like I said, it's like Christmas when we open our emails and then we get a new submission from an artist. You open it up and you're like, oh, cool. You know, and, and just so excited to be able to post that for everyone to see and mm -hmm. to see what everyone thinks. That's, I mean, so often we are so surprised by what our artists come up with. And we have some artists that, you know, they'll, they'll just send us, here's the sketch. And we're like, yep, that looks awesome. And then another artist will send us six sketches for one piece. <laughs> and we're like, they're all good. I which one do one? we choose? <laughs> exactly. Which one do we choose? And then we have to talk about it and figure out which one's our favorite. And, and yeah, and, but that's the, literally the best part. It's so much fun to work with so many creative people that's just to see what cool things they come up with. That's so cool. Um, and while my answer is the same, a more specific to me version of that answer is, I am, have been a Star Wars fan since I was a small child, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm fully in it. So sometimes I'll commission art of things that are very uh, exciting and personal to me. And then, so on the one hand, it's like, oh yes, you get to see all the exciting new art, which by the way, it's, it's, it's mostly a black box for me. I send, I give text to Tony and then like <laughs> three to six months later, he's like, look, we took the text and made this beautiful image. And I'm like, it's somehow even better than I could have possibly imagined. <laughs> um, and I can imagine quite a bit. Uh, and so on the one hand, it's just like, yes, uh, my, my words turn into pictures and it's basically magic. Um, and then imagine that with certain pieces where I am emotionally invested in the, in the thing that is being depicted. And I'm just like, Yes, this is beyond Christmas at this point. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. Yeah. Yep. Well, we got a couple questions from the chat we can go to before we keep moving on, which was, uh, will we still see different alternate frames in set two? And Tyler, do you want to answer this one? Sure. Uh, in a word, the frame treatments and graphic design of set two will match the frame treatments and graphic design of set one. Uh, there will still be hyperspace. There will not be anything new. Cool. Great, great news for hyperspace fans like myself. <laughs> okay. uh, and so someone asked if there was like art style differences between sets one and two. Uh, so Tony, is there is there any like major difference or is it like just, you know, different characters and obviously different Yeah, set? There, as far as the, the style sandbox, nothing has changed between set one and set two. It's, okay. you know, we're, we're in the same style range as uh, for set two as we were for set one. Very cool. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll even give a little bit extra uh, to the audience. Uh, the art in set two and the art in set one were mostly commissioned all kind of in one giant clump. They were. Um, this is true. Because of how much the, ga the initial game design overlapped between the two sets, right? Like we were still in the middle of set one figuring out what was even going on in set one while we were working on set two, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, so, so set one had a much longer development period than a normal set, w than all the future sets would. Um, and the overlap of the art windows was part of that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yes. So, uh, that pretty much wraps up some of the questions we had there, but let's talk about some of your favorite pieces from set one. So, <laughs> we give Tony a chance to see. Yeah, show <laughs> two of the art pieces that you, you really enjoyed, and I think people recognize them as some of you know, the community's favorites as well. Oh, so yeah. your, your I would imagine are, at least one of them. Uh, yes, one of them <laughs> I know is everyone's favorite. Uh, so we can go ahead and throw one of those art pieces up. Uh, let's start with Darth Vader. I mean, what's not to love, right? This piece is so, ah, it just captures the feeling of the game that we really, that we love the most. It's just so dynamic, so exciting, colors great, great depiction of Vader. Ah, 
it's just fantastic. I, I love the little like the little like leg up on the rock thing he's got going on. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very exactly. It's, yeah, it's like very commanding like presence yep. pointing out over the exactly the war zone. Yep. It's oh. So good. Ivan Dedoff did a fantastic job with this piece. That's really cool. And uh, let's go on to your second pick for the set, which is one that I love and is a card that I love too. Oh yeah. Uh, exactly. Yeah, benthic two tubes. Yep. Benthic two tubes. What's not to love when you have an amazing piece of art that happens to be on a card you want to put in every one of your decks? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's the perfect combination between this is this looks great and mechanically works perfectly for all the things that I want to do. So exactly. it's going to go into these decks. Yep. Um, as a as a tangent on that, um, uh -huh. as a, a longtime card game player, it has been wildly fascinating to me how much people conflate the audience in card games in general conflate. Uh, their feeling about the art with their feeling about the card. Yeah. Of like, oh, this is a card I love, and therefore I'm going to become very attached to the art piece. Or like, because I've seen some unbelievable art pieces in other card games mm -hmm. that are just on like, ah, it's like a, a weak draft oh, fodder common yeah. that nobody wants to play with. <laughs> yep. It's like, but the art is unbelievable, guys. And they're like, nobody cares because the card's bad. And I'm like, no, don't do this. Uh, anyway, that's why we have a flatter power level in our game. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, which works for me as, a, yeah, right? as an artist. I'm like, oh, cool! I get to use more stuff that has cool art on it. Yep. Very yep. cool. So, I think that brings us to the end of some of the questions we wanted to go over here now. But as, as people ask questions in the chat, we'll throw them out there. But let's get into some art for set two, Shadows of the Galaxy. So Preview why not? Time. We'll start with uh, give yeah, the audience what they this, want. This exactly. is really what everyone's here for. <laughs> yeah, this is what everyone is super excited for, I'm sure, <laughs> and hearing from you, Tony. Uh, but uh, let's get into the art pieces and start off with one that'll look. Pretty familiar to people who have been following along the last couple weeks. Amphis Nast. Uh, Afif Khaled did such a good job with this piece. It is so strong. She's so commanding. Just And the detail is so perfect. Color. Uh, I love this piece. So good. I mean, Amphis is such a cool looking character anyway. Yeah. And then Afif just made her look just amazing. The details on, on her costume are very, very impressive. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Even down to the energy effect around her uh, her vibro axe there. Yeah, yeah, the vibro axe is so cool. Oh my gosh! All right, well that's that's a cool one. Let's go with some stuff that you know we've teased out. I think our next art piece is something that was mentioned briefly uh, that's going to be coming in the set, but we haven't really gone into detail. Hey, that's the bad batch, that's bad batch, my boy. Yes, bring it in. Gotta, gotta love Echo. Echo is so yeah. cool. This piece, uh, I love. I love this piece of Echo because um, our artist Ahmad Mir really captured Echo's likeness so well in this and, and adapted it to the style for the game. It's just so much fun. Ah, love yeah. it. That's a really cool piece. <laughs> I, I can understand why that made your top two <laughs> parentheses yeah, six yeah. card, parentheses <laughs> six. card pieces. Yeah, it's yeah. looking through them. It's like, no, I need this one too. I need this one too. I need I, this one too. I was like, can I at least have a third? He was like, yeah, you can have a third. And then I just on a whim just included some like honorable mentions like on a separate page and then I showed up today and they're like, yeah, we just got all of them. Yeah, like, yeah. they're also cool. Like, yes, People want to awesome. see them. And uh, exactly. I couldn't pick from all of your top picks because yeah. I was like, oh, every single one of these is great. So we'll, we'll just try it out all Let's of them. Let's keep going. Might as well, yeah. right? Uh, cool. So we can go on to our next one then. Let's see what we have next. Oh, yeah. Yes. Corrin Bounty Hunter. Uh, Mark. That's not the card title. Just so that it no, knows. Not, yeah, the card not, the not the card, card, card title. title. But yeah. we're not going to tell you the card title. Yeah, yep. just describing this one. So, uh, yeah. Mark Eschix, and I'm, you know what, I'm, I swear I'm going to mispronounce his name. Mark, if you watch this, email us and tell us how to pronounce your name. We would love to know. We would love to know. Send us an audio clip. Yeah. I love that it has the like little, the bounty. The bounty fob. The bounty fob. Yeah. Hanging, the fob hanging, hanging out there. Yep. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. Exactly. Just like a little detail that makes it feel more in universe and, or, and then also feel like, wow, that is actually just a bounty hunter, not just a guy with a blaster that looks intimidating. It, and um, lends a little more to and, it. And if you notice, a lot of the pieces of his like outfit and costume and pose are kind of like flared out. Yeah. yeah. Like he's in mid, mid, you know, he's yeah, like he's spinning just, he's, around he's or swinging, something. He's swinging yeah, his blaster rifle yeah. up. Very, very to dynamic. Take somebody out. Yep. That's so cool. All right, let's go on to our next one, which I think people will be very excited to see as well. I personally am super hyped about this uh, because of the timeline of how this piece and card were designed mm -hmm. and, and commissioned um, because it was done around the time when the Book of Boba Fett was beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and so I personally was like, oh, I have all these strong ideas of what I think is going to happen in the show. 
uh, and I want to make sure we capture them correctly in the art and on the card. And then I was right, and it was, felt so validating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. That piece is great. And I know for a fact that uh, this is like Jim Cartwright's favorite art piece from this set, because uh -huh. he mentioned it to me as we were figuring out different uh, art Yes, uh, but art he's pieces. biased. He's obviously <laughs> biased. Uh, he's biased in favor of everybody. He loves his Mandalorian. Yes. He loves his Mandalorians. That's, that's such a cool piece. Yes. Uh, so I think we can go on to some of Tyler's, I think, I believe. Is it next. my turn? I think, yes, it's yeah, my turn. Tyler. <laughs> I stuck to the, the drill of only picking two, but Tyler, you have quite a few here yeah, that we can yeah, go yeah. through. Um, so first, let's talk about this Kira. Um, mm -hmm. This is a, this is a, a Somewhat unexpected version uh, of her, but I really like the way the way that the light frames her. Yes. It makes her stand out in a really dramatic way, and uh, especially the way it interacts with. Now they don't get to see this, but the way that it interacts with the colors of the card mm -hmm. is also very exciting and dynamic. Yep. Um, it's very visually striking, and it's a character that I really love. Yeah, uh, uh, which obviously Kira's also awesome. helps. <laughs> That's fair. Yeah, she looks strong and powerful in that piece, yeah. just like she was in the show. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, we can move on to our next one, which is a character that I know we've heard a lot of people excited to to see in some of our like posts or our key art and different pieces. But here's another look at Doctor Afra. Yes, uh, Doctor Afra. This is uh, Sandra Chilinska's uh, uh, Doctor Afra piece, which is, I mean. Uh, the character is fun, but look you, at how dynamic that. If you that, hadn't that picked that this as one of your favorites, I would have. Good, good, good. Because it's because it's amazing. Sandra um, did such a good job with this piece. Uh, uh, the red uh, red rim lighting coming in, just yep. the, the angle of Doctor Yaffer just falling back, you're ready to fire her blaster. She the does, smile. Yeah. Um, there there are a number of characters that are depicted in this set, especially where like the 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 expression on their face has me absolutely captivated. That's one of them. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. All right, and I think we have one more before we come back around to you both. Uh, but this is this is the one that made like Tyler's not even honorable, honorable mentions, but this is a top pick for you. Of uh, one of your I favorite could not pieces. decide between these three which one I was going to cut. Um, this is, of course, a Hunter of the Haxian Brood from the Jedi Fallen Order games, uh, and it's it stands out to me because of the 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 color palette and the the specificity of the costuming and the fire effects, which are both, I, I actually really like that the fire effect looks less realistic com contrasted with the character who is very realistic. It mm -hmm. creates a cool like dynamic thing it's a in visual my brain. dichotomy. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> and of course the audience is gonna, now they're all gonna lose their minds because Fallen Order's in the game. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, when I was talking about our sandbox wanting to incorporate everything from every media, I forgot video games. Video Hello. games, yeah. Video We're games, definitely gonna have novels. video game stuff in. That's, yeah. Well, he's a bounty hunter, he's an underworld. Yeah, exactly. This is a bounty hunter he, underworld set. He completely belongs here. Yeah. That's really cool. Well, we can move on to uh, one of my two favorites. Yeah, uh, your turn. Yes, so oh, yeah. uh, the, the next one is a, a scene that will be familiar <laughs> for uh, fans of the shows. Uh, but the Tuscan Raiders lifting up the crate dragon pearl, mm -hmm. uh, which I did not say correctly. <laughs> we don't have to talk you about did. it. You I did. You did say correctly. I did say it correctly this time. Just you time. did. Just so now, that's great. Yes. yes. This time I am correct, <laughs> and that's good because it's in front of more people. Uh, but I just love this one, like the celebratory stance there, and everyone just super excited. It feels really fun. I think it, on the card too. When I looked at this one, as I was looking through, I was like, mm, it just yes. looks perfect on this on this card for what it does as well, and it feels great. Um, um, my, my fun story about this art piece is we commissioned this for a card in set three. Oh, uh, right. And then it got done early, and we had to cut a card from set two, and we were like, oh man, you know what we really need? This specific effect. And I was like, guys, I have the perfect art for this card. <laughs> <laughs> That's so So good. we got to move it up, because it got to be done early, because the finished. artist was excited. Exactly. Yeah, I, I'm glad, because then I got to talk about it earlier. Exactly. This perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I don't know what I would have picked next. Uh, but I think my second piece that I picked here I didn't put these in order. I think this actually, the second one is my is actually fa your favorite. Is actually my favorite. Oh. And let's go back with another Bad Batch uh, character. Uh, this uh, we have Tech. Tech. Tech was on my list too. Yeah, um, we, we had and, a fight over who to talk about Tech. Xander was like, "I'm gonna put Tech on." I'm like, "Oh, good. I don't have to." <laughs> oh yeah, just all the different colors there. Yeah. Tech is such a cool character that I, I just was all about seeing. Like the green on the goggles stands out mm -hmm. so much too, and it gives yeah. like almost like a bug eye feel to it, which it I think does. is very intentional there. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, and trying to figure out which scene to depict Tech in for his character piece, 
that would feel dynamic and exciting, but also true to the character. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I was particularly happy with the idea of uh, he's standing in the doorway with dramatic lighting. That gets you the visually in yeah. exciting bit. But also, he's like mostly there to be a, a thinker and an advisor. He's not there to be a fighter. Yep. Yep. Very cool. Uh, so let's get into some of the honorable mentions then. They're, I guess they're not honorable mentions. They're not honorable mentions anyway. we're <laughs> um, Also, uh, Tex card is very, very good. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, again, my, I think, like you said, a lot of my love comes from if it goes in the decks that I want to play and yep. it feels good, and then if the art piece is just perfect for it, yep, it just yep, skyrockets yep. up there to be like, the cards that I will collect every version of, um, personally, because I don't I don't collect everything, but I need my favorite cards to have yeah. every version of them. There you go. Yeah, uh, nice. I, I agree. Chat, rest in peace, my boy. Yes, exactly. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right, let's but get into really these uh, honorable mentions then, real quick. Listen, it's Star Wars. Anything could happen. Uh, uh, oh, I love this piece Tyler's. so much. Um, this piece has so much attitude, and I'm here for it. <laughs> this is Han Solo being like, yeah, we got a whole army right over there. It's great. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Yeah. Eric Hibbler did such a good job on this. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. Let's, uh, Tyler, what's your next one? Uh, well, we, we already did tech, so um, yes. let's talk about Lom Pike. Uh, this Lom is the, Pike, that's right. The dealer in truths. Uh, he's here to give you... An offer that you can refuse, question mark? Um, <laughs> you're not really sure what he's up to, uh, and I like that. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a character who is going to be a, a weirdo card to play because he is a weirdo in the lore. <laughs> he really is. Um, and I was very happy with the scene that we got for the card, given the weirdness of the card and the weirdness of him being like, yes, I'm going to help my enemies against my friends, question mark? Mm. Mm -hmm. And we have another pike for yeah. our next art piece, which worked out well pike. that you yeah. both wanted. Yeah. yeah, different different source material. Though. Different source yes. material. This one's from yeah from Solo, the Pike Sentinel. This is another one of those. The same artist who did uh, Benthic Two Tubes, Omar Khan Kirit. Mm. Oh yeah. And he just captures these cool gritty characters so well. Uh, just yeah, I love, I love it. it. He's so dirty. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. It feels right for that part of Solo, right? It does. Very cool. Uh, and then we have two more, and so I, or actually three more. We have two on, on the same line. So yeah. two, two and an asterisk. <laughs> two, and then two that two feel then natural two together, the, two, right? Two great tastes that taste yeah. great together? No. Yeah. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, sorry. So we have Jabba the Hutt here. Yes. Just gorgeous. Look, yes. at, look at Salacious Crumb's and so, eyes. And Salacious he's Crumb back there, he's a monster. Crumb. He is sinister. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was so excited to see Salacious Crumb yesterday in yes. our reveal, and here's just a little more Salacious Crumb. Same, same artist. Same yeah, artist, yeah. too. Same artist. So and here's cool. Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. I tore uh, Prieto. Which, I tore Prieto. the perspective is doing a lot for me. Yes. Of, of getting across how, like, yes. spoiler alert villainous he is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're going to look up to Jabba because that's just the way he always wants it to be. He's got to be above you. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. And so we just teased this for a second, but we have two more coming, but these, you know, kind of go together. So let's uh, show It'll off. be very obvious one. Yes. yes. It'll be Definitely. very obvious why. They've already figured it out, probably. Yep. Maybe. 4 L O M. Got to love 4 L O M. Such a cool looking character and such an awesome, awesome piece of art to depict him. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, um, Joshua Carson has a very, like, flat color style, yeah. uh, which... I personally really like and it's fits this character and spoiler alert. Really, and the next one. The next one yes. really well too. Really <laughs> dynamic. There he is, Zuckus. Okay. Yep, because you got to have Zuckus and Four and Four L O M go together. Yes, that's so perfect. perfect. Yeah, and I love Some the attitude that Zuckus has here too. He's, yeah. he's squinting one he's eye. Got a it's squint. like, yeah. Yep. yeah, yep. He's coming for you. And that flat dynamic um, uh, coloring and and all those spot blacks really make these pieces just punch right off the off the. Uh, well, off the page when you, or yeah. off the card when we get yeah, the cards. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I know that you mentioned that they fit well together, like seeing them. So that means obviously that you want to be playing them at the same time, potentially, right, Tyler? Is is that something you would you would say? Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Guess I'll find out. That's um, I will say this, uh, which is, I think, this is this is just my memory, but it's a, it's likely. I think we specifically told in the art brief that these two art pieces should be given to the same artist yes, because the cards do. are so directly linked to each other. Yep, which do. makes sense. Yep. That's very cool. 
Part well, of. I think that brings us to the end of our art pieces that we wanted to show today. We don't have any other hanging questions here, uh, but I just want to say, please let us know which of these pieces that we've shown off today, as well as in the last week or so, like which ones are your favorites in the comments? We'd love to hear uh, what you think and what you're excited to see in uh, set two Shadows of the Galaxy. Uh, is there anything else you all want to mention before we sign off for the day here? Ooh. Uh, everything that I have said has been said better with pictures. Indeed. <laughs> Everything's better. It's the art just, you know, the art, we love the art. And we love being able to do something different than what we've done in, in other Fantasy Flight um, Star Wars games. Yeah. Feels very uh, different. And I yeah. love how, how big the sandbox is. Yes. The sandbox is, is very uh, inspiring. Yeah. Very much so. Great. Well, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you all at home for joining us. Uh, be sure to tune in next week as we go over the, up, the mechanics showing up in Shadows of the Galaxy. Uh, and we will see you all next time. So thank you all again. We'll see you. Bye-bye.